<laughs> let's get uh, let's get started. Uh, so we've been talking already, but everybody, thanks again for listening to another episode of the Fair Chase Podcast. I'm with Rudy and Matt here from Tacticam. Uh, and we have been uh, just kind of chewing the fat a little bit here, uh, talking about Matt's 300 win mag plan that he's, is that that right? You move to Colorado, you get a win mag. Is that, is that it? Yeah, I think that's basically the rules. If you move to a state like Colorado, you can upgrade to a 300. And uh, why not a seven they, millimeter though? Or a six, five. Uh, so I, I mean, I, I've shot. Uh, so um, like I told you earlier, my, my wife, she's actually from Oregon and um <laughs> I do put in for tags out in Oregon. And when I do go out there, I do use a 7mm. Uh, my father-in-law, yeah. he's got a couple of them. So just so I don't have to travel with anything, I just use his. Uh, and I, I love the 7mm. Uh, it's been a very, um, um, it, it's been a gun I've had zero issues with. Uh, I just want to try something different and go with that 300. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. So I, I, I just got one last year and I've loved it. Uh, Bergara. It's just a it's just a solid rifle. Good, you know, it's good good rifle. Support. Oh yeah, yep. lots of good reviews on that one. Yeah, it's sweet. It's heavier. So my dad's got a Tika, and it's a lot lighter. Which I know, I mean, for a lot of reasons, like it's good to have a heavy rifle, right? But uh, like hauling around, hauling like it around the mountains and stuff, it's like it would be sweet to have like a pound off, you know? Oh yeah. In fact, I'm actually leaning more towards that, especially out here with all the. Um, with all the walking that I have to do out here, especially at 13, 14,000 feet, uh, yeah. I'm actually looking more towards the lighter side of rifles. Yeah. So you just moved from West Virginia to Colorado. What part of Colorado? Um, about 25 minutes south of Colorado Springs. Okay. All uh, right. Actually, when I look out my office window, I can see Pikes Peak right out my okay. window, which is super cool. <laughs> I, that's My brother lived right there uh for for a couple of years i went to visit him once and i flew in i had to it was actually traveling for work but it was right through his area so i pulled off okay and i had kind of allergies and i flew in the plane and i kind of felt congested and so we get there he's like let's go hike pike's peak and it's pretty high elevation already so i get there i'm like out of breath and like i'm <laughs> breathing hard and like oh. i get like halfway like past the parking lot i'm like dude i don't know something's not right i i'm done and that was i literally turned around and went back and he still brings yeah. it up like you No, i, I it's really rough to make yeah. it out of the parking lot it, it's rough especially from like where you're at too because you have quite a bit of humidity uh yeah. so my biggest struggle so far i mean there's times when i first got out here the first couple of days i was winded just by walking up my steps in my yeah. house i yeah. mean because back home if humidity is 87 percent here it's 30 percent uh yeah. the house uh, back home above sea levels on like 1200 uh, feet above sea level here we're right around 6,000 feet above just where my house is so there's a yeah. huge difference in the atmosphere like it's wrong oh, to yeah. get used to <laughs> well and you, fl you fly into that always messes my lungs up yep. or something i always am like congested when i'm out of, in a plane and then you go from zero to ten thousand <laughs> right away and so anyways, not my proudest moment, but anyway, was so your brother uh, military? No, my brother was not military. He was, uh, he just loved Colorado. He lived there probably, I don't know, six years or so. That's um, cool. Yeah, no, it's, it was great to have him there reason to get out and, and visit and stuff and hang out. So, um, well, yeah, cool. Matt's, well, Matt's going to learn real quick about that mountain hunting. Um, you know, I'm, yes. I'm in Arizona here, so we hunt elusive coos deer we, we range everything from mule deers down in the desert, the flats, all the way up to hunting uh, coos deer in my area up to about 8,500 feet. And then nice. northern Arizona, you know, it's same thing, 12,000 feet. And like you guys were talking about, if you're not ready for it, man, you know, <laughs> the altitude will get you. What's up? We are going to thank a few of these sponsors that help make this beautiful show a reality for all of you. So yeah. here we go. So, so a big reason, I would say, to why we're so successful and we have so many bucks on the wall is because we use HuntWise. Uh, HuntWise is a GPS mapping app that you can download on any phone, any platform. You can look up public land hunting, ORV trails. You can get the weather. They actually have a, a HuntCast 2.0 that they teamed up with Jeff Sturgis to make. It's awesome. You need to check this thing out. Go to HuntWise. Download the app. I feel like if you go into the woods without optics, it's like going into the woods without pants on. Would you agree with that? To a point. To a point. <laughs> uh, we are huge fans of running uh, binoculars, uh, spotting scopes, and different things when we hunt, uh, even whitetail. Uh, I bring binoculars out every, every time I go. Uh, we choose Vortex Optics because they make the best glass in the business. 
They have an amazing warranty, uh, super clear glass, super helpful people that work cool. there. Also, if you want to rep some sweet Vortex swag like this warm shirt on a nice fall day, head over to yeah. Vortex Wear. Thank you. And use the promo code TFC24, 20% off your purchase. Saddle game, you need to be in it. If you haven't been in it yet, then you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. Trophy Line Tree Sales makes some of the best saddles in the industry. They have three different platforms that we use and that are awesome. I want to make a quick plug for the wingman with a couple steps. You can take one last step, uh, stick, and it's like a combination of a stick and a platform. I've been exclusively hunting out of it this year, and my mobile setup is so sweet. I'm very proud of it. Awesome. I highly recommend awesome. the wingman. If, you are, if you're ready to pull the trigger on that and you want to get with James and do the wingman, head over to their website, and you can save yourself 10% on the purchase TFC 10 will get you that. I like to think I single-handedly got James to switch to compound again, but I'd probably be a liar and everyone would call me out on that. Um, we shoot prime bows. We think they're awesome. Great accuracy. Super shootable. Uh, made here in Michigan. Made in Michigan, so we love that. It's hard to complain. That's where Jared was made. So Surprisingly. We like that. Yeah. Welcome. So go check out these prime bows. We are of a firm belief that – the arrow is the lifeblood of the, of the archery, archery industry. industry. We've said it a thousand times. Uh, but in all seriousness, we are huge fans of arrows that are durable, um, that sh fly well, and that kind of make up for some of my inaccuracies in the way that I shoot. So we shoot vector the, custom arrows. The hammer. The hammer. <laughs> That's um, Thor. That's Thor. They are made in Wisconsin uh, by our buddy Isaac. Uh, great arrows. Uh, and if you want to go and get yourself some, have a little bit of a discount, use TFC10 for 10% off. Or call Isaac up and tell him we sent you. Mm -hmm. You want his phone number? Comment below. Yep, comment below. It's, it happens quick. But you guys down in Arizona – I have late, like a pretty late season. Like you got stuff into January, or February, right? Yeah. So, so the coos deer don't rut till mid January. And, um, uh, I, I always assume everybody knows what a coo, a cows deer is. Yeah. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just a Southwestern United States, um, subspecies of the white tail. Little fellas, uh, you know, a, a monster coos deer, uh, scores anywhere between hundred and 115 inches, you know? Just to yeah. give you an example of size, about the size of a of a Great Dane. You got a good one behind bigger. you. Yep, there's one right there. That was uh, like my second or third one I ever killed. Uh, my uncle's a taxidermist, so he does he does really good work for for our family. And I got a couple hanging up here, but they're they're just so fun to hunt. It's unique. I, I really want to get Matt down on on a coos deer hunt here soon. And then you're welcome to any old time you want to put in for that Arizona rifle or archery. Um, but the month of January is a really fun time to hunt. I mean, our rut is late. Um, we even start as early, archery as early as mid-August. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a strange phenomenon, you know, hunting deer in 105 oh, or 110 degree weather in the desert. Um, you, just, you have to be pretty, pretty dedicated to it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Can you guys hear me all right right now? Yes, I hear you. Are we coming yeah. in okay? Yeah. I lost you there for a minute. But yes, that's awesome. Yeah, the um, I've never hunted out by you. Never made it that far down southwest. Um, but someday I would love to, especially with coos deer, the, the gray ghost. Like that's yeah, that's like, like an epic hunt. It's a lot of fun. And actually, matter of fact, uh, Matt and I are talking about a rifle elk hunt this year. OTC second season in Colorado, which is something I've not done. I've done archery there out of state. Um, yep. I'm a big advocate for taking advantage of these opportunities while they still last. Some sure, of the, some yeah. of our over to the over the counter um, opportunities states have kind of gone away in the last I'd say five years, right? I think states like Wisconsin and um, there's a couple other that used to be OTC and now aren't. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people that hunt there, but man, you know, there's always opportunity, and um, you know, even if you don't come away with an animal, it, it's still always in my book a win of a hunt. Yeah, I've done the second I just, season I just like, Colorado hunt. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I just like getting it's up in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, all right, guys. So you guys are Tacticam guys, um, and so I'm not sure if people who are listening know what Tacticam is, um, but you should. I mean, uh, the way I first heard about you guys was you you stuck this camera on the end of my bow, like you know what I'm saying. Like that was at least for me the first time I had ever seen anything like that. 
since then you've expanded and you've done a, you have a lot of action type cameras, stuff that goes on rifles and, and so on, fishing stuff and also trail cameras. Uh, how is it working at a, a company like that? What's that like? Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Man, it's a it's a wild ride. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, it's just uh, it, it's it's I'm, I'm I'm I still I wake up some days and I can't even believe I still work for this company. Um, it's yeah. just it's incredible. Um, it's definitely a true blessing. Um, you get to meet a lot of cool people uh, along this ride as well. Yeah. And you guys are working in some like cool technology that seems like it's changing a lot, right? Like the camera technology. We were talking trail cameras at the beginning, right before we were kind of started recording, but uh, going from even non-cell cameras to cell cameras, like that's a huge jump. And now being able to delineate between Verizon and AT&T or, you know, organize your, your pictures, uh, that's relatively new. Uh, and I would imagine things are probably changing for you guys quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, just even the, the new cameras we're bringing out this year between the Gen 2 and the X Pro, I mean, ha sub, sub uh, half second trigger speeds, uh, their capabilities to send uh, the amazing uh, quality and like the images that you get on your phone. Yeah. Uh, it, it's impressive. Uh, and yeah. we, it just keeps getting better every time we bring out another model. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so you guys are, you're, you know, talk a little bit about the idea behind putting a camera on your bow how did that idea come about you know what do you see it doing now and like where do you hope to to take that whole idea yeah about 10 years ago our founder ben stern who <coughs> was a photography major um they, he's located in in the wisconsin minnesota area big deer good hunting so mm -hmm. <clears throat> he used to use whatever camera was available at the time and you know always came up with the same um uh, pinch points same pain points um mounts weren't very good right yeah. weren't very ergonomic weren't very hunter friendly um cameras were hard to turn on in the moment of truth plus plus you're always battling that classic fisheye bubble effect that makes that yeah. turkey at 30 yards look this big so that's how that's how tacticam started and um and like you mentioned i mean we've just been pushing the envelope ever since um you know we uh we just actually launched two brand new cameras. Um, one is the Tacticam 6.0 and one is the Solo Extreme. Yeah. And we don't like to, we don't like to um, launch new cameras every year just for the sake of uh, launching them. So our 5.0 camera was our flagship for almost four years. Yeah. You know, they're 4K cameras, image stabilization, you know, um, digital zoom built in. One touch operation means um, when you when you tap that button, that on button on your Tacticam, yeah. it's going to start recording right off the bat. So there's nothing left to think about. So for the guys and gals who are kind of on the fence about self filming, um, just because it seems like this big daunting process, right? Um, we made it very simple. Uh, the mounts are designed to be right in line with your barrel or your or your bow. You know, once you attach them, and it's like it's like set it and forget it. You click that button, it starts recording. The only other thing you need to think about is the shot process. So very, very simple. Just hit a button and go. Hit a button and go. That's right. Do you download it off? Like do you throw it on a, an SD card or how do you get it off there? So with our POVs, um, it takes up to 128 gigabyte micro SD. So all of that, all of that footage just downloads right to the uh, SD card. But Every camera is Wi-Fi capable. So if you have a smart device in the field, you can review that footage real time on that camera, um, which is a really cool feature because tree stand hunters, any hunter really, it gives you the opportunity to go back and look at that shot, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, sometimes we're grappled with that um, mentality, like, man, was it a good hit? Depending on where you hunt, you know, should I back out for the night, retrieve it in the morning? that kind of thing. So it really is, it's not just a fun tool in my mind. It's also very functional yeah. and, and, you know, there's a lot of utilities to being able to review those shots, especially when it comes to training, practice, getting youth involved, new hunters. We get testimonials all the time to the website that just say, Hey, you know, I was able to hook this up to my daughter's rifle scope or my son's rifle scope and see exactly what they were seeing. And it not only helped in the training process, but also I got to, I got to witness their shot real time while it happened, which is just those are the memories that we love live for. Yeah, no, I totally That's see a, that. Helpful that, that real for that, yeah. Go ahead. 
that that real time just uh i have a pretty neat story that real time uh video uh mode that you can actually watch on your smart device before i got in this position with tech cam i started out in customer service and i actually talked to an older fella one night from oklahoma and i told him about our fts package and the 5.0 camera and he actually bought the package well um i hadn't heard from him since he bought it well um, about a year later, I was in the sales position and I had one of my dealers reach out to me and he was telling this story about a guy in Oklahoma shot the number two state record buck. No way. And he was legally blind. And the reason he did it was with our camera sitting with his spotter as he was watching it on the phone. He helped this guy line the crosshairs up on that buck and dropped it right there. And it really? was the number two. Yes. Yeah. A year later, I caught back up and finally caught the story and found out that it actually worked. Uh, so when you're viewing it on the phone, it is live feed. Like there's not really a delay at all. Really? Yeah. Well, that's that would be super helpful. Even like you said um, at the beginning, Rudy, um, seeing like when you're bow hunting, seeing where you hit a deer. Uh, I mean, that's something I feel like a lot. Almost everybody I know will say at some point. I think he's frozen. It's like what sorry about that you guys got me now yep gotcha i don't know what is going on squirrel and the, the circuit breaker or something and anyways you guys both have your rudy uh are you there okay yeah, rudy's on you're on mute rudy <laughs> there we go there we go all right let's jump back into it uh and by the way we do edit these so don't worry about Perfect. any of that uh no worries <laughs> All right, so you guys, um, you talk to me a little bit about your tra trail cameras, right? You have uh, cell cams is kind of where you're focusing uh, as well. And that seems like a little bit more recent. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we've we only been selling uh, the, the, the cellular trail cameras. Uh, this would be our third year. Okay. What, what made you think that now was the time to do that? I mean, you guys were point like point of view type camera for so long. What made you, you do that jump? Uh, so with the cellular uh, cameras a few years ago, there was quite a few issues, uh, either, you know, either it was mechanical on, on, on the camera side or um, you just weren't getting the quality photos or videos that you were expecting with, with the cellular camera. And our, basically our goal was to create something better uh, yeah. and basically create something uh, dependable, better uh at a valuable price point or yeah. you know it, so. it's part of our culture too i mean we're in the camera business um it's not just for hunting and i think i think <coughs> users really like it when they can trust one brand name for like yeah. all of their all of their needs <clears throat> right so we got the trail camera we got the bow camera we got the rifle cam uh, cameras um spotting scope cameras which are great for pre-season um we have, we haven't talked about the scrape fix line. So we have a line of, um, uh, natural or, uh, synthetic attractants. Um, oh, really? Yeah. We got the fishing cameras. I mean, we really just wanted to be a, a brand name that you could trust all year round, not just for like the prime hunting season. So yeah. it was a way for us to diversify and, um, you know, Jeff Peel, our CEO and Ben Stern, they're, they're innovators. They yeah. always want to push the envelope and, really in my mind i've been on with the company for about four years now um i think that's why we're still around there there's some camera companies that have come and gone since we started and i just feel like it's because we listen to our customers we listen to our users we listen to you know our testers and stuff like that and we all you know when we when we launch something it's going to be better than the last model and that's yeah. just 
And, and the reveal was a testament to that. We wanted to offer a low price camera with high features. And, you know, what, one thing we have done is stayed consistent with our pricing model. And, you know, we understand that we have a, one of the top rated cameras on the market, um, you know, but we have the price of the camera hasn't reflected that, you know, we've sure. stayed at that low grade price um, and, you know, great affordable plans too, because now our cameras, if you're familiar with the reveal, you used to have to pick either Verizon or AT&T. Now you <laughs> can pick both. Cool. So. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, Matt was telling me a little bit about that where you can kind of choose between the two, uh, which is sweet because I was telling him there's a spot that I hunt where Verizon is great, AT&T sucks and then vice versa in the other one. And so to be a, like pigeonholed in one or the other is kind of a bummer. So absolutely. Yeah, that's a cool, cool innovation. Uh, it, so I got to go back. You said you got a spotter camera and I see it behind you. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Cause I've done the, I connect my phone right to my, my binoculars and my spotting scope or whatever. Uh, but it yeah. seems like that might be the way to go. What's, what do you have going on there? So this is our Tacticam spotter LR. And this is actually an independent 4k camera that fits on almost any spotting scopes and a spotting scope and a variety of binoculars. And it's just, it's just an independent unit. It's got yeah. a, it's got an, a high def LCD screen on there. Um, takes up to 128 gigabyte micro SD, same battery as your Tacticam. So two and a half hour, you know, record time. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of pain pains I had with my old phone adapter was number one, I upgrade my phone probably every year, right? Yeah. So I'd, I'd have to, and then if I upgrade my glass, I got to get a new adapter for it too. Um, so that's number one. Number two is nowadays we ask our phones to do so much. So map app, ballistic app, communication tool, lifeline tool, mm -hmm. right? Right. So having, so having an independent unit out there in the field that records in 4k plus has additional zoom built in, it's really been a game changer for me, especially like preseason when I'm getting an idea of what's out there on the mountain. Um, yeah. Or if I'm setting up my buddies down in, the, in a shooting position, you know, film, filming his um, kill or his impact shot. Um, it just really has improved the quality of footage that I take away. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and again, it fits on almost anything. This is the small size Maven. I run it on, I mean, we've tested on everything from Zeiss to um, Swarovski all the way down to like your base. Like you don't have to have good glass for it to be a good result. Like I was using sure. the original Diamondback um, spotting scope for, for years with, well, at least a year and a half for, with really good results. So. Yeah, that's interesting. And I would imagine, you know, I've been thinking that as we've been talking, you guys probably have a bunch of uh, sweet film, like of all the guys, like you guys, at least you bet better otherwise you're in the wrong you know job because i feel like your your uh, records have to have bucks and bears and, and great things like loaded in there yeah yeah if you work for this company you have quite a bit of footage <laughs> <Out of it. laughs> and that's yeah, like the thing the social i mean media clips put themselves together at that point yeah and very few of us are trying to be youtube stars it's not about that but you know filming your hunts there's a level of it adds a a, another degree of challenge, um, plus a high level of reward. Like when, like <clears throat> the first the first bull elk I ever killed on Tacticam was archery. It was actually my first archery bull elk, and um, I'm sitting there filming bulls walking in. We were in a calling sequence. I'm filming it. I'm on my knees. Go to full draw. He walks about 35 yards out. Looks left. Looks right. Lets out this you know uh, location bugle takes another couple steps and I shoot him. And, and yeah. that video was back in 2017. And I've probably replayed that maybe 10,000 times. Just, it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, you got to check this out. You know, who, you know, me telling you is one thing, but I'll send you the link later on. It's like, he blew my hat off and, and you can probably hear my heartbeat in that video. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's insane. You know, that's so cool to be able to, you know, you, you still have to be able to tell a good story, right? You still have to be able to spin a yarn and, and sure. do the whole thing, but with a little uh, ver a visual, you know, uh, help that that's pretty sweet. It that's is pretty sweet. Yeah, Matt, you taking any? You, you get plans for taking any uh, video out in Colorado this year? Uh, yeah, tons. Uh, I'm really hoping uh, Rudy, can, Rudy and I can get on that second uh, season for elk because uh, uh, yeah, we should get quite a quite a bit of footage. Um, I've actually gotten to the point since I'm out here now. 
Um, I don't leave the house without my spotting scope, my tripod and my spotter LR. Like it's, it's, it's time part of, of my year. truck now. Yeah. yeah. Just because there's so much game out here. Um, uh, like a little bit ago, we, we ran down the road to grab dinner real quick. There's just a herd of antelope just sitting right beside the road. I mean, yeah. uh, last weekend or the weekend before we went up the top of Pikes Peak, there's a herd of, uh, bighorn sheep just walking around, uh, with all the babies, like they'd have all the babies, yep. like it's just stuff you don't see every day. So yeah, my spotting scope and my spotter, the, it's part of my truck now. I don't leave the house without it. Yeah. I, I'm Wait. starting to get that way. Uh, even just here in Michigan, just because like bucks are in the fields, you just start getting excited that yeah, everything gets a little paler as you get into summer and, you know, fall's coming. So, uh, yeah. Definitely. Well, the, the thing is, you don't have to live in a Western state to enjoy a tool like this. I mean, back when I lived in Virginia and North Carolina, guys all the time always had a pair of binoculars in their glove box um, or a small spotting scope just because they'll overlook bean fields, corn fields, you yep. know, just to see them deer at the edge of the field. And to have a tool like this with maybe like a window mount or something, I mean, so sweet. It, it's your shotgun buddy, especially during preseason. Hey, for sure. Um, even when I, I lived in West Virginia, I had a, you know, feeder set up in right away down in behind my house. I left one of these set up in one of the spare bedrooms and I would just watch that feeder, you know, throughout the day and at night. And I mean, I'd get some really cool footage of just deer coming in, eating on, I mean, it wasn't hunting, but it was just nice to use that. And you know, I got some really good videos. Yeah. And it just makes you all excited. Like just to go find deer with, with the binoculars. Yeah, I, like, I on just hunting for fun. right there. Yeah. It's just fun. It's sweet. <laughs> yep. What'd you pick up there, Rudy? What do you have? I figure we just give a look, man. So okay. this is actually my hunting bow. And um, yeah. all right. Yep. So what's new with Tacticam? These are our two new models. The one on the top here is the Solo Extreme. The Solo Extreme replaces our 5.0 and our fisheye camera. So it's got all the features of our previous cameras that our users loved, all wrapped up into one low price camera. Um, waterproof, variable zoom, Wi-Fi capability, ultra HD. Um, this is really going to be a hot camera this summer. And yeah. then this one here is our 6.0, which is our, our new flagship camera. And uh, I feel confident giving you a look because this isn't going to air till after August, right? Yes, correct. Perfect. Yeah. So, so you guys, you'll see this on our website, but the new thing about the 6.0, obviously it's a new design. Yeah. Um, but it is 4k it's got some really great image stabilization and improvement from the 5.0 plus it's got this lcd screen right there that allows you like our our users kept asking us man we just wish you had a screen on that tact cam we wish you had a screen on there um so that that's what warranted the new design because it gives us that flat uh surface to give a, a thumbnail screen but you can see exactly what i'm filming right now if it was in zoom or in focus um, but this camera right here, variable zoom, all the bells and whistles of the, of the normal tact cam, plus some new mounting options. That's and, sweet. um, yeah, these cameras will, th these cameras will attach to your bow. They're shock resistant, um, image stabilization built in. They are built rugged for the roughest, um, situations and they're both waterproof. So we're really excited about the rollout of our brand new POV cameras. Do you just leave those on your bow all the time? Like, cause I, I'm always thinking like, you know, uh, like my stab, my stabilizer hanging off. Like I'm always leaving that hanging out. Like, are you practicing with that? And just that's part of your setup now? A hundred percent. So your Tacticams are just like any other equipment. You know, once you put something new on your bow, you get out and you get the reps in. Like I always, I always find when people say, well, I just didn't have a good experience. I said, well, you didn't. I, first thing I ask is, did you try to mount that camera the night before you hunt and then use it the next day? <laughs> Because there is, you know, it becomes part of your shot process. When I'm at the shooting range, I just practice that sequence of knocking an arrow, turning the tactic cam on, getting a nice smooth draw, and then a nice release. Now, some people drop their follow through hand. That's okay. You could either modify it to where you don't do that, or you can just get in the habit of picking your, picking your bow right back up to get back on that animal. And, I feel like it actually know, encourages you to follow through in your shot a little bit. Try and I think it, the... I think it does. And I bet Matt has about the same opinion too on it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But no, those are, those are permanent fixtures on, um, those are permanent fixtures on my bow. And, you know, unless I take it off to use it for another application, like shotgun, these yeah. cameras are fully customizable, customizable between all of your shooting platforms. Well, you, can you throw a regular stabilizer on and connect the camera to it? Yeah, so the so the 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 solo extreme with that shotgun barrel mount, 
is yeah. on top of a stabilizer bar. So for the hunter that doesn't want to modify their bow, right, and then uh, replace their tubular stabilizer, yeah, they can right. just put it on top of theirs. And <clears throat> what I that's like actually to do, how I have my bow set up. I just use yeah. the the clamp. The clamp. Exactly. Um, I like to mount it, you know, as close as I can to the riser because it kind of keeps the center of gravity. The center. Sure, of that's smart. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 But I mean, these cameras are only three and a half ounces. I mean, I wish I wish you could feel them, but they are they are really really light. Insane. That's yeah. cool. So, so that's a that's a new product coming out August, and people will be able August first. Yeah, 1st. we're excited. I mean, it's our first major change in, in a camera design in probably six years. Wow, six years or so. Yeah. So, so you guys. Um, so you say you're coming up with say that that camera. Like, have you been testing it for a while? Like, how do you how do you figure out if a good idea, an idea is a good idea? Uh, we have a really, we have an extensive product and development team. Yeah. Um, we have, we utilize beta testers. We utilize our, we have, um, you know, a variety of team members throughout the United States that we rely on to give us feedback on products. Um, so one, usually, usually when we release something new, it's because customers keep asking for us. Right. You know, change in features. And there's some things that, that don't warrant a change, but like I said, the LCD screen, um, and some other features were something that we were really, really getting a lot of feedback through our customer service as a feature that people really, really desired. So yeah, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. And then that same camera, you and I were talking before the show, um, that same tubular camera can be used on your, on your rifle. So I know I didn't realize how many, uh, rifle hunters you guys had in Michigan, but yeah. Oh, lots of them. Yeah. I mean, our FTS system is just a mount that adapts to almost any scope on the market. It's going to come with seven sizing adapters. So it's really versatile. And this camera is actually filming exactly what I see through the scope. So does it get the crosshairs in there? Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it doesn't, it doesn't affect your form on the rifle. Um, it's going to borrow a little bit of eye relief, but I have this one mounted on my 300 Win Mag. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's, there's no issue. It accepts the recoil very well. And, um, you know, if, if I run out of eye relief, I can just add a little bit of length to pull or move yeah. my scope forward. So this right here, man, probably neck and neck with the spotter LR is like my favorite tools in the Tacticam bank. Because when you have a shooter spotter combo and you're filming both ways, the videos, the videos that come away from that, that shooter spotter combo is exceptional. Yeah. So you guys, uh, like I was saying before, you, I'm sure you have tons of crazy footage that people you know normal people won't have as many as you know as tag uh, employees have uh, what comes to mind so like say matt you know i'm like hey matt um you know you you film a lot of hunts like what's your favorite hunt that you've got on film like what's the coolest thing you ever got on film uh i, I would have to say some duck hunting uh it's duck hunting. cool to yeah. hit one of those birds when it's full speed flying and then all of a sudden it just folds up and hits that wire it's it's pretty cool yeah <laughs> and it, it, it's it's i have found out that has got to be the most challenging hunting to use cameras because you have to have them on before you pull the shot off so right it, it's it you got to move quick <laughs> so interesting if, yeah, you, if yeah. you can get some good duck hunting footage uh it it it, 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 it you got to be lucky I mean, because yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of movement going on at one time. Yeah. What about you, Rudy? What, what, what comes to mind for you? Definitely my archery elk bull elk video. And then probably my second one would be um, my daughter's first mule deer hunt. Nice. Yeah. yeah she, um, she killed a, a small buck, but um, she killed a buck at about 420 yards. Ooh, and uh, nice. I got it right there in the scope camera and um this was before the spotting scope camera but you know i filmed us hugging it was just a mo it was just a moment that um that's another video where i i've watched it quite a bit shared it with a lot of people just because it tugs on my heartstrings a little oh i know i know how it goes because i've got um my daughter is is nine and, and so she's uh where we we talk a lot about uh hunting this year she, she has insisted that she's going to be doing it um, and so I'm, we're going to start with the crossbow thing, I think early season, uh, here. And so, no, so when you say some like memories that stick out, like some of the biggest memories are, are taking your kid out. And, and, Correct. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. 
Um, so you guys, what hunts do you have planned for this year? I think you mentioned maybe second season rifle uh, at Colorado for elk. What else you got in mind? So I uh, actually, I, I, I struck out pulling tags in most of the states I hunt. So I'm actually probably going to take Rudy up on that January hunt as well out in nice. his neck of the woods uh, just so I can get some hunts. Uh, you know, being new out here, I got a lot to learn out here. So uh, I'll, I'll do that one with Rudy here and then hopefully another one out in his state. Yeah, that's awesome. What about you, Rudy? I'm actually trying to fill an archery bear tag right now in Arizona. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't get, I didn't get any bull elk tags. <clears throat> Arizona's a funny state, even as a resident, you know, it's still pretty tricky to draw archery, yeah. archery tags. I, I estimate it's every four to seven years to get a decent tag. That's why, that's why I take advantage of those out of state um, yeah. opportunities. I know the people from out of state OTC uh, states are probably like, stop telling yeah. everybody to come here exactly yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> that's right we get but those I mean, messages it, though sometimes i'm telling do. you i'm um it, it can be a reality um it's not impossible it's not just something for the rich you know it's like if you can be a little bit disciplined put some money away for two or three years you can probably hunt every two or three years out of state yeah yep exactly yep good hunt yep that's have, a, sure. have a decent hunt a great experience um I advocate that stuff hard, but yeah, outside of that, I didn't even draw, um, uh, Arizona deer tag. So I'll be doing archery over the counter probably with in August and, or with Matt in January. That's it's always a fun time here. Yeah. And, and bear, I mean, so you haven't shot a bear yet. What's, what are you waiting for a big one? What's the deal? Time. I, okay. it's the spring season has been open for about six weeks now, or maybe yeah. a little bit more than that. And I just haven't, I've been traveling to trade shows and family things and, Kind of excuse, goes. excuse excuse that meanwhile that bear is just getting fat in the woods waiting for you yeah i mean it's crazy because out here where i live i mean they don't really hibernate right so this time of year our monsoon season came a little bit early about six weeks early this year so where they would have been really congregated around water holes and hitting them daily almost yeah. almost to the, like to set a clock to this year there's been a lot of water everywhere um so and then not only that Here's another issue is that Arizona banned trail cameras as of January 1st. Yeah, I did see that. I did see yep. that. Yeah. So cellular was already unlawful to use for hunting purposes, but any trail camera as of January 1st was, was outlawed. Uh -huh. So, you know, you have, I, I hear arguments on both sides. I think they're yeah, effective sure. tools. I also don't think that just because you have a target buck on, on or animal on camera, it's not a guarantee you're going to kill it. Right. You still have exactly. to do everything right to to harvest that animal. So, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm partial. I was telling Matt, I'm, I've got a big trail cam plan this year. Me and Jared and Tom here in Michigan, we're gonna just like litter the woods with them. And so, yeah, yeah, not really, but we're gonna put a, put a bunch out. This plan. You get a couple out. There. So, I mean, they're force multipliers. I mean, what does a tank of gas or diesel cost nowadays? Yeah, you know, the the biggest concern is not disturbing the areas you hunt. Yeah. Um, are you mostly public land or is this private stuff? Public land. So I got to be careful where I hide them. You sure. know, there's people there and I've had them stolen. But actually, I ha I've only had one stolen, which is not bad. Usually I hide them pretty well. One time I was like, ah, no one's going to come back here. And like, sure enough, like went back to that, that spot and gone. You know, that was like the most expensive camera I had too, of course. So here's a fun fact. Our new, our brand new X Pro, which just launched on August 1st, has GPS built into oh it. that's nice yeah you can track yeah. the thieves where so, they take your phones so, yeah so if it, it, anybody yes yeah, so if anybody steals it as soon as they turn it on it's going to ping its location you'll see it right on the app i'm coming to kick some ass yep that's right yeah <laughs> so no actually my always thing was at least leave the uh sd card behind like because if for that the one that they stole, a like, solid yes yeah be cool man that was that was not a cell cam so just give me that sd card uh, uh, give right. me that info so all right, guys, well, we're coming up on time here. Um, so you, you mentioned it, some releases, some stuff uh, coming out August 1st. Uh, we covered a little bit here. Um, I, I want everybody to know where to find you, where to follow some of the things that you guys are coming out with. How do they do that? Yep, um, uh, tacticam.com. Sorry, Matt. Um, no, our it, we, have a, we have a robust Facebook presence, Instagram, YouTube. Um, you know, and, mo and we have a volume of videos, guys. So if you have any questions about how this stuff works or, you know, everyday users are sending us stuff daily 
I mean, yeah. so, I mean, you don't have to be an expert at that. It's just point, click and, and shoot. That's really it. Just be able yeah. to hit. We just, shoot. uh, on, on all three of our product brands or websites, we just, uh, basically revamped the dealer locator. So it's super easy to find the local mom and pop store all the way up to a national store to find any of the products that you might want to try out that we, uh, we brought out. That's yeah. a great point, guy. Yeah, that's a great point. Please, please support those local dealers near you. Uh, yeah. Big box stores, we love them. They do well. Um, but yeah, there's some of your local stores where you can find it. And if Tactic Cam's not in there, say, hey, give them a call because we love working with them at the grass yeah, we're, level. We're constantly updating that, updating that website and adding new, deal, new dealers to it daily. So yeah. Yeah, that's handy. It's, it's nice to be able to get your hands on equipment. You know, the, the local stuff is important. Uh, and usually that's where I'll get things like that, uh, where I can mm -hmm. talk to the guy you know, that knows about it, actually look at it, feel it, pick it that's up. Right. Uh, that's a big deal. And it's a big selling point. You know, if it's quality made product, you, you want people, you know, hands on with it. hundred percent. Yeah. What's nice. Uh, we have a team program. A lot of our team guys are friends with these local dealers. Uh, they've trained the local dealers. So even if you go in there and have questions, a, a good, good part of our local dealer network they can actually help you out and show you how a lot of our stuff works because they've been trained properly perfect yeah all right guys well hey thank you so much for coming on uh everybody go check these guys out uh, august 1st some some great stuff came out uh that you're gonna, gonna want to check out so thank you everybody uh, we'll see you next week